According to the bulletin of the Atomic Scientists website, the Doomsday Clock is an internationally recognized design that conveys how close we are to destroying our civilization with dangerous technologies of our own making. A friend, I want, I want you to read all about the Doomsday Clock right here. First and foremost among these technologies are nuclear weapons. But the dangers include climate changing technologies, emerging biotechnologies, and cyber technologies that could inflict irrevocable harm. Now whether by intention or miscalculation or by accident to our way of life to the planet. Today we'll look at some reasons why the doomsday clock is now set close to midnight. My name is Brent Quinfield and I'm a Seventh-day Adventist Christian and this is the Advent message. In the year 1995 the doomsday clock was set 14 minutes to midnight but today that has been adjusting to frightening proportions because of the extraordinary danger of the current moment. The Science and Security Board today moves the minute hand of the doomsday clock 30 seconds closer to catastrophe. It is now two minutes to midnight, the closest the clock has ever been to doomsday and as close as it was in 1953 at the height of the Cold War. In addition to the threat of nuclear war, now let's take a look at some of the alarming threats to our society in terms of crime, disease and immorality. There were an estimated 17,000 murders in the U.S. last year, which my friend is an 8.6% increase from 2015. In October 2017, Mexico suffered its deadliest month of murders since it started keeping records in 1997 with 2,300 murder investigation. 2017 was Mexico's deadliest year on record with 29,000 murders recorded, leading to a murder rate of 20.5 to 100,000 inhabitants compared with 19.4 in 2011. Venezuela's violent crime epidemic appears to be escalating into a full-blown humanitarian crisis. The precise dimensions are hard to know, however, because along with the collapse of the economy and widespread hunger has come a near blackout of reliable government crime statistics. See, Venezuela's capital, Caracas, was proclaimed the most violent city in the world. The Venezuelan government stopped publishing comprehensive crime data more than a decade ago. And the discrepancies between what authorities say and data released by independent organizations are extreme. Okay, we now turn our attention to diseases which have recently been plaguing our world. MERS, H1N1, swine flu, Chikungunya, Zika. It seems that another virus with a peculiar name always seemed to be right around the corner, threatening to become a pandemic. Over the past decade, the World Health Organization has declared four global health emergencies. Two of them were in the past two years. One, the Ebola epidemic in West Africa and the Zika outbreak that has spread throughout the Americas. Or if that seems like a lot, it is. Researchers who charted the rise, the rise of infectious disease from 1980 to 2010, the Royal Society Journal, found that outbreaks have become more and more common in recent decades. Many of the pathogens that spark deadly outbreaks aren't new. Researchers have known about Zika since 1940s and Ebola since the 1970s. 
Some of these viruses have evolved with humans for many, many years. But viruses, bacteria, and fungi can now spread around the world with greater effectiveness and speed than ever before. And when they turn up unexpectedly in new places, they catch doctors and health systems, and people's immune systems, by the way, off guard. Well, here are four reasons, key reasons, why we're seeing an uptick in infectious, infectious disease around the world. Number one, more travel, trade, and connectivity. Only comparatively recent has there been extensive contact between people, flora, and fauna from both old and new worlds. See, in centuries gone by, pathogens spread at a relatively slow pace. For example, it took more than 10 years for the Black Plague to spread across Europe. Well, air travel changed all of that. The jet plane took off in the 1970s and accelerated during the 80s and 90s. So, now we have this modern transportation or globalization that is moving animals, human commodities, and pathogens around the world. The movement of people and goods is happening at a faster rate and greater volume than at any other time. You can now travel pretty much anywhere in the world in a day. And you know what, friend? Unlike the plague lurking across Europe in the 1300s, a travel can now bring a deadly strain of bird flu from China to Europe within 24 hours. Number two, urbanization, a growing danger to humanity. More than half of the world's population now lives in cities and just about every country on the planet is becoming more urbanized. Global health researchers have called the trend an emerging humanitarian disaster. Across Latin America, for example, 130 million people, nearly one in five, live in slums. Many of these slums lack a clean and steady water supply, and so people keep buckets filled with water around their homes, which is ideal mosquito breeding ground. Not to mention the fact that air conditioning isn't common. Leaving bodies at homes warm and making them even more hospitable to disease-carrying bugs. Globally, unprecedented population growth following World War II has meant that not only more people living in cities than ever before, but populations are exploding into areas that were once inhabited only by other animals. So you see, anytime humans interact with animals, there's a chance that a pathogen could make the leap across species and strike them. Today, about three quarters of new emerging infectious diseases are spread by humans, animals, by human and animals, which is a threat to the rise of agriculture. Number three, a warming climate that is helping with the disease outbreaks. When we think about health, experts say, we need to start thinking about how environmental factors like climate change can matter as much or sometimes even more than our personal behaviors. Okay, we now turn the spotlight upon the plague of immorality that has our society in a death grip. Moral degeneration implies the degradation or debasement of moral standards in a person or especially a group or community or society. To get a sense of how different attitudes were in the 1960s, this will do it. During the 60s, in a study, women who were never married before were asked the question, and I quote, In your opinion, do you think it is all right for a woman to have sexual relations before marriage with a man she knows is going to be married to someday? The answer was a resounding 86% of the women said no. Friend, what do you think that answer would be in these times? There were 2.6 million households led by a single father in 2011, which is a nine times increase from 1960 when that number was fewer than 300,000. This is according to a Pew Research. This means that men now lead a quarter of all single parent 
families. Now listen to this. Half of all children born to women on the 30 in America are illegitimate. Three in 10 children were born out of wedlock, as are 53% of Hispanic babies and 73% of black babies, according to the same Pew Research. Friend, if we fix this problem, the poverty rate would plunge, drug use would plummet, prison populations would drop, the suicide rate would dip, and we'd be healthier as a society in almost every way imaginable. Unfortunately, Bible prophecy tells this will never happen. On the contrary, things will only get worse, much worse. Studies also consistently show not just that children turn up better in two-parent families, but that people who are married are happier than those who are single. Because of a soaring divorce rate, high-profile breakups, and gay marriage, eh? we've stopped treating holy matrimony with the reverence it deserves. Now let's take a look at how movies have changed over the last 50 years. If filmmakers in 1963 wanted the approval of the Production Code of Motion Picture Association of America, which of course they all wanted, if they wanted their movie to play in theaters, the dialogue could not include any profanity. Characters could not take the name of the Lord in vain or ridicule religion or use any form of obscenity, meaning just about anything related to the sex act. The plot couldn't present sex outside of marriage as attractive or justified. Now here's a direct quote from the production code of Motion Picture Association, and I quote, listen to this. Homosexuality is to be presented as perversion. The subject of abortion should be discouraged and must never be more than suggested, and when referred to, shall be condemned." End quote. To there, there are filthy cartoons aimed at children and even video games that don't come close to living up to this high standard anymore. In fact, these sort of leave-it-to-beaver standards for entertainment seem almost bizarre today, yet they were the norm 50 years ago. Are we not better off as a society because your kids hear video game characters using curse words or listening to rap music glorifying murder and are regularly exposed to themes that were considered too racy for adults a century ago? Absolutely not. Could we go back to rules anywhere near this strict? Well, realistically, no, but that says a lot about how much our society has degraded morally since then. Oh friend, it's two minutes to midnight. The following is a word-for-word -word quote from the Science and Security Board Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists. These are the same people who created and tracked the doomsday clock. I quote, the year just passed proved perilous and chaotic. In 2017, world leaders failed to respond effectively to the looming threats of nuclear war and climate change, making the world's security situation more dangerous than it was a year ago, and as dangerous as it has been since World War II. The greatest risks last year arose in the nuclear realm. North Korea's nuclear weapons program made remarkable progress in 2017, increasing risks to North Korea itself other countries in the region and the United States. North Korea has or soon will have the capabilities to match its verbal threats, specifically a thermal nuclear warhead and a ballistic missile that can carry it to the U.S. mainland." End quote. Friend, it's two midnight, two minutes to midnight. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind and it's closer now than it's ever been. I could almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the call at the midnight cry. We'll all be going home. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind, and it's closer now. 
it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the call at the midnight cry. We'll be going home when Jesus steps out on a cloud to call his children. The dead in Christ shall rise to meet him in the air. And then those that Let us pray. Father God, we look around us and we're fearful of the calamities that are upon us and that are soon coming. We pray, O oh Lord, that we will be strengthened with your Holy Spirit so that we can withstand the chaos that's ahead of us. But we're gladdened and encouraged by the fact that Jesus is coming soon to take us home. Those who are keeping his commandments and love him with all their hearts and soul. Bless us, dear Lord, as we look for your coming. Strengthen us. Be with us. Bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, that's all for today. As usual, I say to you, always remember that God loves you. Yes, He really, really does love you.